it wouldn't work long term. So don't forget to get my free training. Don't forget to join the Discord underneath. Um, and that is gold. So I'm going to go for an index um, um, over here. I'm going to go for the NASDAQ. I'll do the S&P as well. Um, the US 100 uh, ticker here, which you can see. Lots and lots of people are looking ahead now and they're trying to decide where to go with US indexes and global indexes as a whole. And the story for a lot of people is a little bit mixed. I've got my puppy mug here. I've got a Labrador puppy at the moment and um, it's taking a lot of looking after. Uh, but I do like animal mugs if, anyone's, if anyone wants to send me them. But anyhow, maybe if you get your gold trade right, you can do that. Um, but anyhow, so uh, you can see if you go onto a lower time frame on the US 100, you come up, 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 up since the end of uh, or the latter stages of October. And it's been very, very steep. You know, you can see in a matter of days, 1st of November to like the 3rd, you've come up 14.3 to 15.1, up to 15.3 in, you know, in a week or so. It's very, very harsh price movement. Now, that is coming about as there is a change, a massive uptick in positive market sentiment for the US 100 and various other indices. Okay, so you can see that this index has come up very quickly. Now, the current red candle, which is forming today, isn't doing an awful lot. And you can see that the last drop I mentioned to many traders, I said, look, I think there's a very strong bias here to the upside. So just kill off your shorts very early. If you had done that, you would be fine at this point because the price is up ticked higher. That wasn't a, that was not a shock. OK, that's why I mentioned it. That's why you've got to be able to react to the market now. That's why you need to know where your exits are going to be, because if you've got positive rampant market sentiment, the market will just keep ticking up until it gets to the point where that changes usually because you have some kind of economic data. Now, there is US data coming out, retail sales, inflation, all that kind of stuff, employment um, this week. So that might be, you know, a really key factor. I called it long here. Many of you will have seen that. I know many of you will have seen that. I said, look, there's key price action to the left there. You've got key moving average there on your weekly. It's the 40 MA. It was a brilliant place to get long. So if you did, I would very well suggest being out of those longs. Now, the point comes on where I would like it short now, because we finished with the long side. And there's people, again, who are, who are watching this will say, well, if the price might go up, why don't I buy now? Now, like I said, statistically, that isn't going to work. You may find that the price goes higher. But if you bought there, you would have lost money. If you bought there, you would have lost money. So why would you buy here? Look at the three times previously in very recent times where you would have lost money. OK, lost, lost, lost. You lost money on all those times. So why would you decide to repeat that process? It may be, it may very well be the price does go higher. And I absolutely would not be shocked one bit if it does. But I'm not going to buy it because I know statistically over time, if I keep buying highs, I won't make money, regardless of where I think the market is going to go. All I can do is say, look, last time we were well up here at these all time highs, we got absolutely smashed. The market just came way, way down. And again, there would have been people at this point who were saying, you know what, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to get long here. What a fantastic idea. OK, but it doesn't play out like that, does it? So. You then have this big fall. You should know to get from here, the peak to the, the trough took almost a year, a year of down movement. Do you really want to get stuck in a year of down movement there again? I don't think so. So I would look short slightly higher up. I think because of the strong market sentiment that you will get there, I am not buying because the difference between this, that where we are now, 15 five let's say and 16 is not very far compared to what you might get if you come down here okay so that's the point you've got a much lower profit margin to the upside that is why buying highs doesn't work because you've got such a diminished amount of room to the upside compared to the downside it's much better to get an order so that you can catch a larger move rather than getting an order in at a bad price for a smaller amount of movement so 
I am short biased on the US 100 because I want a technical short zone. I think it may go higher because you've had slightly improved market sentiment in regards to what the Fed is saying about the US economy. But I would rather be on the end of that to catch the move down, just like you had here and there. And there, okay, all of these pops you can see lead to a lower price every time. So I would much rather be short, but I think I'm going to leave it slightly higher. That's why I said to get from these early exits. And that is also why I made the point so clearly, and this is really important if you trade like this, yes, it's all well and good drawing a trend line like that, but you should never pretend that the trend line is the end of it. That is going to cause you to go like this. That is just not the case. Sometimes it doesn't happen. You can see that there. Okay, so no matter what you drew, really, or however you wanted to draw it, okay, it actually came slightly higher at this point. So you would be more like that. You know, it doesn't matter. My point is, you will break through trend lines. It happens. You can't pretend that that is the end of the market because it's not. All you can do is in the event of coming higher, you just replace your short up here for a DCA short higher. At least in my opinion, that's what I would do. Then at that point, your trend line becomes more like that. And you're using this previous high to judge it. So if you come up above this previous high, it wouldn't shock me at all. Anything above this, I would short lightly because, like you know, with your US 100 before, you have a great uptick for a significant period of time. That can happen if you get another leg of growth. So I would just be careful, um, just because it's the, the the US 100, I would lightly short up there. So that's the US 100. Like I said, I'm going to repost this, so don't forget to go underneath and get my free training. I'm going to do the SPX um, as well. I think what I'll do is the S&P E-mini futures. Um, I will get to the, the New New Zealand, by the way. I will do that. I'm just going to cover these first. Um, so you've got your uh, you've got a similar situation again, like your US 100. If you look here, you're not getting that fall immediately. You're not seeing strength to the downside. You can actually see that the only candle to the red or in red okay trying to pull you down has immediate rejection and you're coming straight back to it so clearly like i was saying before in my us 100 video or us 100 part of this um there isn't that negative bias pulling it down there isn't that reason for people to slam in short and that's what's drawing the price up now ultimately like you have seen like i said before like you saw here like you saw there Okay, ultimately these things change. The positive outlook doesn't last forever. People start to get negative about that uh, economic zone. And thus, the price falls, like you've seen three times recently. Um, because there's strong market sentiment and because you're pushing higher and there isn't that big drop coming, you can see it there, I would prefer, again, to just space out my positions. So that means I'll let the market drift slightly higher before I get to short. If I don't short it, I don't care. I can trade anything else on my watch list, be it an FX pair, be it gold, whatever it is, doesn't matter. I can trade it elsewhere. So that's why I'm willing to wait. Don't be one of those people who has to get this S&P short. You've got to trade it short. Don't be one of those people, right? Because if you trade on desperation, if you rush into any decision and any trade, you'll make a worse one naturally because you're desperate for that price. You're desperate to short. You might over leverage. You might get a bad entry. So don't do it. Okay. Um, I would let price drift slightly. You have got stronger levels of price action slightly higher up here. So that may be ideal. But like I said, at the moment, you've got stronger market sentiment. In other words, the news behind the scenes is causing things like this. You get one red candle price boom straight up. Okay. Your red candle pulls you straight down onto very key early support in which you've seen price rejection previously. Okay, I'm drawing it all for you now. So having looked at that, knowing people are buying, knowing there's long zones very early on, it gives you the idea that perhaps, just perhaps, it may bounce straight away. And that's, of course, what it did. Okay, so I would only really, you know, nearer 4,500 looks more ideal. 
I am not buying it. Be clear on that. I think it may get higher, but I'm not buying it. You can see your stock oscillator way up. I think you may trickle along. Wouldn't be shocked if you get slightly higher. But the only time I'm willing to short is when there is an increased profit margin. At this point, your profit margin is showing you that early rejection. You're coming straight to that early support on your daily and there's no gap for, um, for a move, essentially. That's the problem with this. Now, it's the same, like I said, to the upside. If you were to buy, you really haven't got long to go. But even so, you're buying a high price. You're buying when your stock oscillator is high. It just makes no sense to do in a long-term process. That would cause you to buy there, similarly. And it would cause you to buy things like this, similarly. And you can see, historically, if you bought these highs, you would lose money. That's not, again, that's not negotiable. That is what happens. You can see it on the screen. And if you go on any chart, load up anything you want and talk to yourself about buying those highs, you'll see exactly what I'm saying. Each time, over the long run, occasionally you'll be right, don't get me wrong, but over the long run, over the variance structure, wins and losses, you will find that ultimately you end up in red. Okay? And that's never good for anyone. You don't want to be in red unless it's Christmas. Right, which is obviously soon. The Christmas shows, the Christmas movies are on the TV. I can honestly say I've watched a few. I won't lie. Um, but yeah, the point is, if you're going to get short, just let the market do its thing. Don't rush in. Don't see that weak price rejection and say, oh, it's going to fall, you know, because it won't always do that. It's okay to wait. It's okay to drop your size and just hang on. Okay, you don't need to go for a home run trade every time. And in fact, the more that you try and search for a home run trade, naturally, the harder it's going to get. Okay, so, so just be wary of that. Now, if I did want to buy this, like I said, ideally, if it gets around that point, it would have to come far, far lower, at least until where we had previous price rejection. In other words, we knew people liked it long. I called it long here because of these lumps of PA. Okay, that was a really strong floor for price. It proved as such. Um, if you get to that point, it, it, it wouldn't entirely shock me, but you would need a big change in market sentiment. But, you know, like I said, you had it here every time. Every time the price rallied temporarily, it just came straight back down. Okay, so if that trajectory um, continues, we'll see. But all you can do, in any case, all you can do is just DCA by shorting at naturally higher prices. That's the only time when your profit margin is going to increase substantially enough for you to get a valid entry. And then when you do come back to these key areas to get long like this, it's more ideal. Now, if it does turn out that when you get there, you actually get lower than this previous low at 4133. And by the way, I'm looking a little bit further in the future than perhaps normal. I may look underneath this low okay, to perhaps other areas of price action, price rejection, at least something around here, okay? So that would be much in the future. But if you're an investor, essentially, I guess this is what I'm talking about. If you're a long-term investor in markets like this, obviously, and it comes well in line with what I've been saying this whole time, you want to buy low. You want to buy at lows. And that, therefore, that is your ideal spot. If you're buying up here, that really isn't a low, is it? You're coming straight off a green candle for a start, so it's not going to be a low. Um, but you can see where I've drawn this. You've got areas of minor price action to the left-hand side. Okay, very minor. But the point is, you've got long-term entries to the upside. And you're looking for a good deal in the grand scheme of that up move. Like you might have there, there, there any time you get a significant dip. So don't be desperate to buy the S&P. Don't think to yourself, well, the, the, the US economy is so good and it's going to go up forever. Because like with gold, if you sat there and thought, wow, you know, people are going to be buying this forever. They're obsessed with buying gold. You can see now that's not the case and it's not happening. Okay, people are now selling gold and it's come down um, and other people will be getting long. So in short, my bias, 4,500, I would only be interested in buying perhaps lightly nearer here for a minor bounce on the way down 4300, 4130, and then eventually nearer this 200 MA. That would give me a very, very long term gauge 
for what would be an overall price, and that's what allowed us to buy all these areas here successfully. So that's my bias for the S&P. Again, get my free training underneath, like, share, comment.